Today, we're diving into some hot news about the upcoming Galaxy Z Flip 6. Samsung's new foldable phone has a lot of buzz around it, but there's one feature, or rather a missing feature, that we need to talk about. Yep, you guessed it. The Galaxy Z Flip 6 won't support Wi-Fi 7. Let's break down what this means for you. From the very beginning, Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip series has always been a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to features. These phones are innovative and stylish, but they often missed out on some of the bells and whistles you'll find on other flagship Galaxy devices. And the Galaxy Z Flip 6 is no different. Recently, the SCC certification for the Galaxy Z Flip 6 was released, and it confirmed that this new foldable will lack support for Wi-Fi 7. For those who don't know, Wi-Fi 7 is the latest and greatest in wireless technology, offering faster speeds and better connectivity. Currently, the Galaxy S24 Ultra is the only Samsung phone that supports Wi-Fi 7. We were hoping that the Z Fold 6 and Z Flip 6 would join the party, but it looks like that's not happening. So why is this a big deal? Wi-Fi 7 promises significant improvements over its predecessors, including faster data transfer rates, reduced latency, and the ability to connect more devices simultaneously without compromising on speed. It's a big step forward, especially as more smart devices and high bandwidth applications become common in our daily lives. Now let's dig a bit deeper into why the Galaxy Z Flip 6 is missing out on this feature. One theory is that Wi-Fi 7 might be disabled at a firmware or software level. This isn't a new tactic for Samsung. For instance, the Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus have the hardware for Wi-Fi 7 on the Snapdragon variants, but because the Exynos chip used in most regions only supports up to Wi-Fi 6E, Samsung decided to restrict Wi-Fi 7 across the board on those models. This approach keeps things consistent, but means that even if you have the hardware capability, you're not getting the full potential out of your device. There's also the possibility that the Z Flip 6 is simply lacking the necessary hardware for Wi-Fi 7 entirely. This wouldn't be too surprising given that the Z Flip series often cuts some corners to keep costs down and prioritize its unique folding design. So what about the Galaxy Z Fold 6? While we don't have an official confirmation yet, it's likely that the Fold 6 will support Wi-Fi 7. Why? Mainly because the Fold series is positioned as Samsung's ultra-premium line and leaving out such a future-proof feature would be a hard sell given its high price tag. So, to recap, the Galaxy Z Flip 6 is shaping up to be another stylish and innovative device from Samsung, but it will not support Wi-Fi 7. This might be due to firmware limitations or possibly even hardware restrictions, but either way, it's a bit of a letdown for those of us looking forward to the latest wireless tech. What do you think about this? Are you still excited about the Galaxy Z Flip 6, or is the lack of Wi-Fi 7 a deal-breaker for you? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. In just a few months' time, the iPhone 16 Pro Max will succeed the iPhone 15 Pro Max and take on the mantle as the best and most advanced iPhone out there. Although there's plenty of time until September and a lot can change, we seem to know a lot about the upcoming top iPhone model based on rumors and leaks. How is the iPhone 16 Pro Max shaping up against its predecessor? What's changing and what's staying the same? Let's see how the iPhone 16 Pro Max shapes up against the current best iPhone Apple has in its roster. First up, let's talk about design and size. The iPhone 16 Pro Max will inherit the same design language as the iPhone 15 Pro Max, employing the same titanium frame with a completely flat screen. The major difference between the iPhone 16 Pro Max and the iPhone 15 Pro Max will be size. The upcoming iPhone screen will grow to 6.9 inches across, a significant bump over the iPhone 15 Pro Max's 6.7 inch display. To achieve this, they're likely shrinking the bezels down even further and making the phone itself slightly larger overall. As per the rumors, the iPhone 16 Pro Max will measure 163mm in height and 77.58mm in width versus 159.9mm and 76.7mm for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, respectively. A small but notable change, all things considered. The iPhone 15 Pro Max debuted with an action button instead of a mute switch and a USB Type-C port at the bottom, so those two features will be carrying over to the newer model as well. However, the iPhone 16 series will be scoring another button, dubbed the Capture Button. Colors-wise, the iPhone 15 Pro Max was available in four understated and titanium-inspired colors. We've heard that Apple might use another titanium processing technique that will make the iPhone 16 Pro Max glossier and also more capable of retained colors. Moving on to display differences. As mentioned, the iPhone 16 Pro Max will come along with a significantly larger display, measuring at 6.9 inches across. 
Aside from the size, we don't clearly expect any other major changes. We're certainly getting a liquid Retina XDR display with an OLED panel delivering superb colors, contrast, and exceptional maximum brightness. The screen will support 120Hz promotion refresh rate, making scrolling through the interface and on-screen content way smoother. Now let's delve into performance and software. The iPhone 16 Pro Max will feature a second-generation 3 nanometer chip, possibly dubbed Apple A18 Pro. As one can imagine, we expect that the Apple A18 Pro will have better performance than the Apple A17 Pro. Due to the heavily rumored focus on AI for both iOS and the iPhone 16 range, we expect that the iPhone 16 Pro Max will come with a much improved neural engine to take care of all the generative AI features. The iPhone 16 Pro Max will also be a first to debut iOS 18 with a focus on artificial intelligence features. The new iPhone 16 Pro Max will also support faster Wi-Fi 7 and a more power-efficient 5G modem, keeping you future-proofed on the connectivity front. Let's talk about the camera. As the iPhone 15 Pro Max deliver a host of important camera features, chief among which is the new 120mm telephoto lens, the iPhone 16 Pro Max can finally address one of the forgotten cameras that hasn't recently scored any significant overhauls, the ultra-wide. Analyst Ming-Chi Ko believes that Apple will be introducing a 48-megapixel ultra-wide camera on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. When it comes to audio quality, iPhone Pro Max devices are always up there with the best, setting the benchmarks for all other manufacturers to measure up against. The iPhone 16 Pro Max will be no exception. The same generally applies to haptics too. iPhones are arguably the best devices when it comes to haptic feedback, giving us precise and accurate vibrations that are sufficiently strong yet not overpowering. Lastly, battery life and charging. The iPhone 16 Pro Max will reportedly feature a much larger 4,676 mAh battery compared to the 4,422 mAh battery in the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Charging-wise, we haven't heard anything about a potential charging speed increase, but we hope to see one on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. So far, the iPhone 16 Pro Max is shaping up to be a logical improvement to the iPhone 15 Pro Max delivering key upgrades in important areas like screen size, performance, AI, and battery life. Thus far, we haven't heard anything particular about a potential price increase, so it's safe to assume that the iPhone 16 Pro Max will start at $1,199 for the 256GB version. Of course, if there's an iPhone 15 Pro Max in your pocket, then you'll probably have few reasons to upgrade to the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Stay tuned for more updates on the iPhone 16 Pro Max as we get closer to its release date. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the latest tech news and reviews. Thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.